Hey folks, Dale Davidson here, the Deer VA guy, coming to you with uh, uh, some news today. I'm uh, going to be discussing a little article from the Washington Post regarding a report out of the Connecticut Veterans Legal Center. But before we get into it, please always like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that uh, when we have these videos coming out, uh, you will be notified. And uh, thank you to my subscribers. Love you all so much. We appreciate your support. So, let's talk about this report that's out of the uh, Connecticut Veterans Legal Center. So, what the uh, report details is that they discovered that uh, African Americans are five and a half times more likely to receive an other than honorable discharge, meaning a dishonorable discharge, than white service members. Okay? And my question is, how the hell does this happen? Okay? Now, look, these men and women sacrificed their lives. Not only on the front lines, but they're sacrificing their families because they're away. So they're on the front lines defending us between freedom and communism, socialism, and any other kind of ism that you can think of. So I don't care what color their skin is. You know, these men and women could be purple for all I care. But realize that our service members, men and women alike, they all bleed red. They're out here trying to do the best they can trying to defend our country from all of these isms out there. So why is racism in our service, military service at all? So back in July of 1948, President Harry S. Truman signed an ex executive order banning segregation in the armed forces. But still today, African American veterans receive fewer benefits than white veterans. So I'm not sugarcoating this, okay? That really sucks. That shouldn't be happening, okay? So the thousand of uh, servicemen and women that I have uh, been able to speak with and counsel uh, over these uh, 30 years of service uh, in the law profession, I've never had one identify their fellow soldier by their color of their skin, okay? It was, hey, this guy, this girl, they had my back and I had their back. And that's the way it should be. So it's obviously not the men and women on the front lines who are the racists, so... Maybe it's management. Maybe it's the command. I don't know. These officers make the policies. Um, why aren't they following these uh, anti-racist policies? Okay. Why are they discharging African-Americans at a higher rate, dishonorably discharging African-Americans at a higher rate than they are white veterans? Okay. I don't know. So anyway, this Connecticut Veterans Legal Center, they call it the Discretionary Injustice, reviewed more than a million uh, military releases and found that, again, African Americans were much more likely to receive a less than honorable discharge. That's a huge number, okay? Now, the VA rules are clear. If you receive a less than honorable discharge, then you can't receive benefits such as housing, education, career training, health care, pension, disability comp in some cases, okay? So you're cut off from all of these benefits that you could be receiving because of the character of your discharge. So as an African-American veteran who served your country, who may have been discriminated against and who may have been exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam or may have been exposed to the water, uh, the toxic water in Camp Lejeune or may have received some other kind of in-service injury, sorry, you're out of luck. Or are you? As Paul Harvey would say, stay tuned. So African-American veterans, we all know, they receive fewer benefits than their white counterparts, and racism is at the root of this disparity. Now, that's according to this study, okay? So, the VA responded to the study, and they acknowledged the racial bias, and they promised to address the issue. 
but how? I mean, give us some concrete things. What are they going to do to get these racial disparities out of this culture? I don't, I don't know. Again, uh, we'll just have to uh, keep you posted on that. So I, I hope the VA just isn't saying what folks want here, giving them lip service, okay? And I actually hope that they do something to in, uh, in institutional racism in the claims process. What if, just what if, you can demonstrate that you were denied a specific benefit due to your less than honorable discharge based on your race? So you were dishonorably discharged because of your race or it, he had a disparate impact, okay? So in other words, if you could show that you were discriminated against in your discharge, meaning you had yourself and another soldier, white, African-American, same charges, whatever, the white soldier gets off scot-free or he gets a honorable discharge, you can get a dishonorable discharge. There it is, there's your racial disparity, okay? So how do you correct a military record? Because in order to receive a benefit, your first, and if you've got this dishonorable discharge, if your DD-214 is needs to be changed, well, how do we do this? Well, first, we've got to go through the Board of Corrections and Military Records. Now, these boards are very, very important here. They have extremely broad powers to correct any military record when necessary to correct an error or remove an injustice. Certainly, receiving a less than honorable discharge based that's based on an injustice such as racial disparity, I mean, that's, that's an injustice. That's, that's a pretty noble thing to be able to do and correct. So what exactly can these boards do? Okay. They can upgrade all less than honorable discharges, including bad conduct discharges or dishonorable discharges issued by a sentence of general court martial. Now there's some peculiarities there with respect to the general court martial, okay? So just know that uh, if you had a general court martial and if you're trying to correct your military record uh, to have a honorable discharge, then uh, that could impact your, uh, your changing of your record. The board can change the reason or basis for your discharge. They can expunge a conviction by some pre-uniform code of military justice. Now this happened before 1951. There's not a whole lot of you folks out there, but that's a possibility. They can void a discharge by changing its date to show that the completion of your normal term of service, that's a good thing. They can reinstate a veteran to military service. I'm, if you've been out for a while, I don't know if you'd want to be reinstated or not. They can expunge disciplinary actions and change or remove enlisted performance evaluations and officer efficiency reports. They can increase or change active duty service time, okay? In some cases that creates eligibility for VA benefits or military retirement. If you didn't get a promotion but you feel that you're promotion promoted, you should have been promoted, then they can order a promotion, okay? They can change the reason for discharge to a medical separation or medical disability retirement. Change your disability rating. Change as far as the retirement roles. They can change that. They remove statutory bars to veterans benefits. Okay. Now, a couple of things that the board cannot do. Okay. They cannot expunge a post uniform code of military justice court martial conviction. Okay. They cannot lower a discharge characterization. So, you know, in other words, they can't make it any worse for you, okay? They can't compel attendance of witnesses at any kind of hearing, and they can't pay you for any expenses in applying, and they can't create or grant you any kind of VA benefits. <clears throat> in order for you to get the VA benefits, though, we have to get your military record changed 
to show that you were honorably discharged or you did not receive a discharge for other than honorable purposes. Medical, okay, discharge is purely, is, is great. So it's a difficult process. It's a long process. It's not an easy process to go through changing your military records, but it can be done. So if you like what we, we've said here, please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends and family uh, to look us up on YouTube here. We appreciate that. As always, we love our veterans. We love the spouses of our veterans. Thank you so much for keeping us free. And uh, until next time, you be blessed. Thank you. Star